Hello, and welcome back to another episode of How Do They Do It? Uh, this week, we're going to have a little look at six uh, super secret um, secrets to making a cool boss. Uh, and today, we have a little special guest with us, uh, Jay Armstrong, the, the maker of bosses. Um, uh, for those that uh, don't know, uh, Jay and I created games together called uh, The Adventure Pals. Uh, it's about a little dude with a giraffe and the adventures he goes on. Uh, so yeah, w welcome, Jay. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I'm excited. I've loved the other videos, um, and so I'm glad to kind of be available to like cameo in one of them. Oh, now. thanks, man. Are you, are you a big fan? I'm a big <laughs> fan of yours. Yeah, definitely. Oh, thanks, man. I pr appreciate I'm that. Fan. Oh. I'm, I'm maybe fan number three out of out of all eight. Oh, well, you know, it's it's a it's a growing fan club, you know. <laughs> it's a great thing, yeah. You, you work with what you got. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so let's, you know, let's get into it, you know. The people want to see these secrets. So let's let's stop messing around and get into it. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, like, we, we created the Adventure Pals, and it has six bosses in it. Um, and uh, even if, like, I, w I would say that we learned a lot about making what goes into making a good boss because we we made them and they weren't very good and we had to learn <laughs> learn how to improve them and and i guess that's what we want to share with with you guys today is like this as, as you said the six things that we've learned the six secrets to making um your boss go from zero to hero oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh very nice well um yeah so let's start with um secret number one i'll let you take this one away but um i'll announce Can it I... oh, okay do you, do you want to you announce it? it oh yep sorry no, go no, no. I just want to say, I, I wish that I hadn't said zero to hero. I wish I'd said lost to boss. Uh, been, there's yeah, no coming back from that. There's no coming back from that. Okay. That's okay, it. let's get into it. Sorry. All right. So our first secret, uh, recognizable patterns first elements of surprise. Uh, would you like to get into that, Mr. J? Oh, yes. Really loud. Hold up. Yes. Right. Yes, I would. Um, so... When it comes to the bosses, and we went with a very kind of traditional model of bosses, which is um, they have an obvious pattern. So they'll do kind of an attack um, and then cycle through into a different attack and then another one on top of that. And each of those um, each of those different attacks should make the player perform a specific action or move out of the way or do something specifically. Um, but the, it's really difficult to not like have that just become really boring after the player's done it a few times mm -hmm. so um, one of the things that we do is we add some randomization and some element of surprise into it so um, for example if your if your boss has a huge laser attack um, and he attack, attacks low and then high and then you know th really high it's it's good to sometimes throw in like an extra one so he'll target you but then he'll also randomly choose between the other two layers or something like that uh -huh. um, uh -huh. so you're yeah. kind of saying it's in like three parts yeah, absolutely. So, like, have have some level of like randomization, so it doesn't, uh, you you, so it doesn't like get too boring, and you really want to kind of strike that fine line between super boring and super predictable, and keeping it interesting because um, you want people to replay it because you don't want your boss to be so easy that you know they just breeze through it. So you need to make it difficult, but you also need to have predictable rules that they can figure out and then feel like feel satisfied when they've beaten them. Wow. Well, wise words. <laughs> Is there an example of that in um, Adventure Pals that you'd like to maybe talk about? Yeah. So this boss we're looking at right now, he does. Um, he's kind of what I was talking about. So he'll do a catch up and mustard attack. Um, you can see there are the two platforms, um, and then there's the ground level. And he'll always attack whatever platform you're on because then it forces the player to move. Um, because you don't want your player standing still and feeling like unin you know uninterested. Mm -hmm. um, but then he'll also sometimes randomly attack another platform. So you might then have to not just jump out of the way, but you've got to either you've got to choose specifically, right? I'm going to jump on the ground or the other platform, so I know where to be safe. So it's kind of it's kind of making you move, making you do something. It's a pattern that you'll instantly recognize. But then there's also you know it keeps it fresh as well. Wow, that's. Crazy bananas. Yeah, watch out for that <laughs> knowledge bomb coming your way. <laughs> All right. Well, good stuff. All right. Let's, you know, let's get through this. What What's our number two secret? So number two, uh, Julian, I think you're going to tell us a little bit about it, is 
is about as the boss fight you don't want it to uh to just be flatline you want to raise and ramp up that difficulty as you mm. progress through the fight so can you tell us a bit about that oh yeah um so this is secret number two uh stages so i guess with uh, any boss fight you know um they are made up of these patterns that you have to learn and then you kind of usually there's some sort of weakness or something that you kind of have to figure out and kind of you'll you'll do that um, but once, you know, if the whole boss fight is just a continuation of that, it's not really that interesting because like you don't feel like you're, you don't feel like you're really accomplishing much because you're just doing the same thing over and over again. Um, so what you can do, like for a small example, you know, when the boss is like at half health or something, then he gets a new attack or something, or he kind of changes a little bit, changes up his kind of, maybe he gets a bit more aggressive or something. So that way it kind of like makes you kind of relearn some of these like mechanics you've already learned, but kind of with a bit of a twist on them. Yeah, and it's also brilliant at like ramping up the, the tension for the player as well, because you think you're making progress and then it's like, uh oh, suddenly they've powered up and they look, you know, they're more powerful, they're faster, they're doing more attacks. Um, and it really plays into that thing where you don't want a player to win, you want them to win at the very last second so oh, that it's like it. <laughs> super, 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 super tense and exciting. Nice. Yeah, I remember in like Castle Crashes or something on the last boss, I think you have to be like three times or something. And every time you're like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm nearly there. And then you kill it and then it gets a new <laughs> form or something. And you're like, why? Why? Yeah, and it makes it so memorable, and you like you think you're there, and it's like, oh no, I'm not, <laughs> not even close. Yeah, that's it. Well, um, yeah, cool, that's number two. Let's move to number three. Layers <laughs> of danger. <laughs> Layers <laughs> of danger. <laughs> this, I think, is probably the most important lesson that I learned um, when we were doing Adventure Pals, and we had mm. one boss in particular, which was the underwater crab boss. Crab letters, yeah. Uh, yeah, and that one just like hung over us for so mm. long because... It was very, very formulaic. It was nothing new. It was just a couple of bunch of attacks, and um, it was very predictable and very boring. And what what I learned was um, to have layers of danger. So what mm. that means is you have various attacks happening at the same time, and you start stacking those up. Um, so we have like a fight towards the end with a with a hot dog boss, and each of hit the things that happen is very simple. But as you go through it through the and it's not difficult to dodge and it's not not particularly hard but when you keep adding them on top and on top mm. it not only makes it harder but it also makes like a busier more intense boss fight because there are more things w to watch out for and it might just be like simply jumping over something or moving out the way but for your brain it's very busy mm. um and that just that makes it really exciting and and so with this crab lantis boss which we're actually looking at now uh, we couldn't have timed it better if we tried. <laughs> um, there are things that uh, what we did was we started adding more attacks that overlapped each other, um, and um, and and that suddenly made it much more exciting. Where you had um, you'd need to swim, but then the fire came out earlier, and then uh, we'd start having laser beams coming out as well. And and so it wasn't so formulaic, but um, it just kind of added together to create a much more exciting and hectic. Um, battle. Mm, yeah, I think it kind of turned into as well, like, um, you always had to kind of be doing something. So I think the problem with this bus originally was just like, uh, sometimes you could just like wait around and you wouldn't really have to be doing anything. Um, so we just kind of made it so there was kind of something always after you, I think. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Yeah. So that's what layers of danger is. Um, and it adds so much. Mm, definitely. Um, so, so Julian, just to move on to number four, um, this is really definitely where you, where you, um, where your exp expertise like shines out. So, um, number four is to do with the visual design, um, and so really we want to know is like how do you make a boss that looks awesome, scary, threatening, but fits with the theme. Mm. Um, so number four, I guess, is to design a badass boss visually. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. So, how do you do it? Uh, I guess um, just the main number one rule is just make it really big. Um, cause like if you're, if you're fighting someone like the same, you know, the same scale as you, it's just not really that intimidating. You're just kind of like, especially if you have like enemies in your game, that are kind of similar scale. Uh, if you got something that's really big, like this hot dog bus, I was just like, I'm going to fill up the whole screen. Uh, and it just makes it feel like, Oh my God, this is, this is crazy. Um, yeah. 
particularly when he slowly like emerges as well it just makes <laughs> yeah. the whole thing feel very scary yeah definitely i think um i guess with the visuals as well it's just trying to keep keep things kind of clear so uh, i think in the in the last bus the crab lantis bus we spent a while like redesigning some of our targets to just make them as obvious as possible just kind of like they would flash and kind of move around a bit um and even in this one it's like there's um there's mechanics in the game that you've already used in the past so you know how to kind of interact with the bus uh, just by looking at it which is um something that's really important i think and with the adventure pals, do you have a favorite boss that you designed, that, oh. like the visuals that you're really happy with? Um, the hot dog boss is pretty awesome, I think. Uh, I yeah, I, I'd have to go with hot dog boss. You know, you can't beat a hot dog. You can't beat a giant <laughs> hot dog. <laughs> yeah, you got you really got. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Um. All right. Let's move to secret number five. Uh, yeah. make it seem more dangerous than it is. Yeah, so this is something that actually applies to not just bosses, but throughout your whole game. Um, have lots of explosions, have lots of um, spikes and scary sharp objects, even if you can't even, your player will never get to it. Um, it just makes it feel more exciting, like when you're playing it. So even like say in this boss fight that we're looking at, you've got um, your papa there and he's, he's fighting um, all these hot dogs up there and it's just more action going on. And it just creates like a much more exciting um, uh, encounter. So like if you if you're like jumping, um, it, it's really good if like say your character jumps off across to the next ledge. Um, if like maybe an explosion goes off behind him that could never damage him, but it could, but at least it it makes you know it makes you feel like oh my god that was a close miss. So just have have things like that make it seem like there's more going on there than there is lots of explosions lots of screen shake um spikes even if you don't need them drops even if you don't need it make it more dramatic mm -hmm. and try and have things like when your boss dies like have loads of explosions go off but they would never actually hurt the player either so i guess i'm i'm saying put in lots of explosions that don't hurt the player <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think it's just making you um it just like um any input the player has just kind of giving as much feedback as possible and making you feel like whoa like I'm so awesome for doing this thing that you know is might have been really basic yeah I think that's absolutely right yeah definitely you want the player to think like I'm awesome like yeah. that's that's your whole goal with the boss yeah make, like, <laughs> like making it huge making lots of explosions just make your player feel like they're awesome mm, that's um, it yeah and that brings us to our final final rule which is uh, test the player on a, on the mechanics they've learned. Mm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll take this one. Uh, so I guess so. What the point of bosses? I guess are usually I don't know. They usually have some sort of story implication. But in terms of like actual gameplay, it should be kind of testing the player on things they've already learned. Um, so in Adventure Pals, for example, uh, it, it's split into like five different areas or like stages. Um, so what we can do in the boss fights is actually kind of like test some of the mechanics that we teach in that stage. And that way it's kind of like they already know how to do it and it's just kind of like if they've mastered that mechanic, it'll feel really nice because they can just be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna smash this. I already know what's going on. Um, and not, not to say it makes it easy, but it's just like testing things we've already taught the player. It's got that nice two double-edged thing where it, like, it makes the player feel great because they've mastered something, but it also helps the designer create a boss around a certain number of mechanics that you've already created. Mm, so it helps. Definitely. It kind of helps the designer make something um, and kind of is a bit of a shortcut because it's like, right, we've taught them about this, therefore this boss must have that. Mm. Um, so it's like a double-edged thing that's, that's really, really helped. Is there, is there anything like during the development of the game that you feel like stands out as a as a good example of this? Uh, well, I, I guess in the, I mean, hot dog bus, we use the grapple hooks and stuff. I think um, with the pirate bus here, yeah, uh, it was kind of more about using your uh, giraffe copter. So just like hovering around, jumping, kind of avoiding um, these things that are coming at you from the side, basically. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and I think I think actually, you know, if if we're being honest, it's it's one thing that we could have worked. I well, I could have done better on with the bosses is like having that in. So that's definitely a goal for next time. Um, yeah, <laughs> but it's, it definitely owns its place as secret number six. 
uh, so many secrets. We're giving it all away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, yeah. So I guess that ties it up. So June, thanks so much for having me on this. Oh, this no, fun. no worries. Anytime. What are, what are we talking about next time, Jay? Well, maybe, um, maybe that's a good question. Is there anything that if you're listening to this, that you or watching this, you, you'd want to hear from us? Are there any more secrets that we can share? Um, we learned a lot while we we're making this game. It took us a long time. Um, so, and it's really fun for us to like talk about those things and kind, kind of reminisce in a way. Mm -hmm. Um, so Sounds yeah, I'm happy to talk about anything. So um, maybe leave a comment and tell us what you want to see next. Oh, that's it. Um, you know, please like, um, subscribe, um, please buy the game. Um, if you don't want to play it, that's fine. As long as you just give